Fresh water is not a pure substance, but rather a solution. Even rainwater contains several dissolved salts in the form of cations and anions. Drinking water, which can be bottled water or tap water, contains substantial amounts of dissolved multivalent metallic ions, mostly calcium and magnesium. They originate from seepage and run off from soils and from sedimentary rocks like limestone and chalk. The concentration of multivalent metallic cations is generally termed water hardness. We refer to total hardness as the sum of calcium and magnesium concentrations. Total water hardness can be determined by an analytical method called complexometric titration or just complexometry. To perform this method we need four specially trained high school students and the following a digital scale, deionized water, graduated cylinders, a volumetric pipette, a beaker, conical flasks, a 50 ml burette, a buffer of pH 10, ethanol, aerochrome black tea, EBT, and freshly prepared EDTA solutions. First, we prepare 100 ml of a 0.1 molar EDTA solution. EDTA is a chelating agent, i.e. a chemical compound that binds tightly to metal ions. We use the ethylene diamine tetracetic acid denatrium salt. <music> Students do their best to avoid EDTA losses. The center of the concave meniscus should be exactly on the 100 ml line at the eye level. From the 0.1 molar solution, we aspirated 10 ml. and diluted to 100 ml. by adding deionized water, thus preparing the working 0.01 molar EDTA solution. This solution will be used for the titration later on. After rinsing the burette with water, we wash it with the EDTA solution and then fill it to the top. Then we prepare the indicator solution. Aerochrome black tea is a suitable indicator in such complexometric titrations. We don't need to be precise here, but dissolving 0.1 grams of indicator in 20 ml of ethanol should be fine. EBT has blue color when in its free form, but turns to a wine red color when complex to bivalent cations. EBT in pH 10 binds preferably to magnesium than calcium, and also the color change is immediate. That's why we need an ammonium-ammonium chloride buffer. First, we analyze some bottled water. Using a graduated cylinder, 50 ml of water are brought in a conical flask. Well, that was not really straightforward. Then we add 4 ml of buffer. Finally, 8 drops of the EBT indicator. After refining up the technique, titration begins. It is better to avoid violent steering, 
because ammonia is volatile and the pH will decrease. During the first titration, EDTA should flow drop by drop to minimize error at the endpoint. Let's dive to what happens inside the flask. At first, EDTA chelates free calcium and not magnesium due to its higher affinity. As titration proceeds, EDTA binds free magnesium and then starts displacing magnesium from EBT. Some EBT molecules become free and solution becomes purple. Finally, all magnesium ions are bound by EDTA, all EBT molecules are free and solution turns to blue. When approaching equivalence point, EDTA must be added very slowly. With some slow motion footage, it is easier to follow the sequential color changes. Normally, we perform two or three identical titrations and use the mean value of EDTA volume for our calculations. Now let's see briefly how we determined total hardness of our city's water in Crete. Tap water in our region in Crete is considered to be very hard. Although this poses no harm for our health, there are certain disadvantages. Soap and shampoos do not lather enough, lime scale accumulates in faucets, pipes, drains, washing machines and boilers and corrosion affects certain industrial equipment. As expected, the tap water was found almost three times harder than the bottled water tested. This method is also suitable for determining the sum of calcium and magnesium in milk. It is essential to dilute milk samples before titration because of milk color and high concentrations of calcium and magnesium. Note that magnesium is included in this result, but anyway, calcium vastly exceeds magnesium in milk.